Interesting to see her drop shot because you don't see much variety from her from a tactical standpoint. She just basically flails away at everything until she has won the match. Unlike so many other players who have tried different things because she doesn't have to. changeover was uh, Steffi Groff took off her silver earrings. So she's going to play the rest of the match without her earrings and Carling Bassett Segusa is hoping she'd play the rest of her match without her forehand. <laughs> I thought you were going to I thought you going to say she picked up Steffi Groff's earrings going to finish the match with them on. <laughs> She throws it. Steffi's the only person on tour that starts a point with a lob. <laughs> Just look at the height on this ball toss across. See? Same story in the first set. Uh, Groff with an early lead, three games to one. She won the first tie, six games to four. There's live coverage of the Bausch and Lom Championships from Amelia Island, Florida, Cliff Drysdale, along with Mary Carilla. Pam Shriver is watching from just behind the umpire courtside. Get some bad bounces on these courts, much more than on a hard court, but very seldom one as bad as this watch it. Uh, what, it didn't hit the baseline, and Groff no. just rubbed out the mark where it hit. It was inside the baseline, a patch of bad clay there. Court chewed up just a little bit right there. That was a grass court bounce. Yeah. Game point. Three of them for the Canadian. Once again, Carling's making Steffi Groff wait. Bausch and Lom are the major sponsors of this championship. They are in a more minor way involved with uh, sponsorship of this great sport of tennis in just so many events around the country through Ray-Ban. One of their products. 
but here they are at the name sponsor. Yeah, for sure. Basit Sagusa holds on. It's three games to two for Graf and one set to love. Colin Basit Sagusa playing 20 year old Steffi Graf who has already won a Grand Slam. Very interesting when you play on a clay or a soft court how different the winners and the errors look. Uh, matches here to some extent are won really on the errors of the other person. As you can see, both of them have made more errors than winners. Of course, those numbers change dramatically when you get to uh, a fast indoor court or grass where uh, it is the person that makes things happen that wins. I like to watch tennis on this surface where players have really got to work their way into a point. Much more of a thinking person's surface, this. And a patient person's surface. With a break of serve, a 4-2 lead for Steffi Graf and one set to low. Mary, you mentioned earlier how three of the last four losses that Graf has had has come on this surface. I think it's pretty evident to see why. It's because if she is a little bit off with her timing, then the other person can run down a lot more balls, and it just makes her errors just come a lot more. prevents you from bringing this up, Pam, but you're the one who beat her on the non-clay court surface, one of the, the last four losses Steffi Graf had a couple of years ago at the Virginia Sims Championships. How did you do it? Well, I served huge and um, didn't miss much. And when I had to pick a side, in other words, when Graf was about to hit a pass, I read her pretty well. You have to, you can't stand in the middle of the court. You got to pick a side. And that's the same thing at the back of the court. Sometimes I feel the players don't commit themselves to one side or the other. match point in the match with Groff. Uh, I hit an approach shot off a second serve. Actually, it was off a first serve of Groff's, and it was an easy winner for Groff. And I said, okay, I'm just going to pick one side. I think it put her off because she wanted to go to that side. She ended up missing the shot. Two, four, 15 all. Yeah, so. One of only four matches in two years. Two of them on this court. Sanchez Vicario beat her at the French Championship. Sabatini on this court and then Pam Shriver indoors. Oh, 
That approach was perfect from Carlin. Forehand approach is not an easy shot in tennis. It's much easier to hit a backhand approach because it's the more natural side to slice off of. That time Carlin hit a roll forehand approach right into the corner. down her results as we were talking about earlier how how quickly and easily she wins at the Australian Open last year for example her scores read 6-2 6-1 six, six, then 6 love 6 love 6 love 6 1 6 4 6 love 6 2 6 3 6 3 6 love and in the final it was 6 4 6 4 against Helena Sukova. take her long to win that major Grand Slam event. Massachusetts holds on. It's 4-3 now in the second set. We'll be back. You see all. So different. Well, for one thing, I'm married and I have a child. And I think my life is more real now. I'm a little more focused because I have other things that I have to worry about now. And I enjoy it. You know, I think I enjoy it just as much as I did when I was 15, 16. But I'm more serious for my approach to the game. She was only 15 at the time, too, that she got the final here, so she has some fond memories of this championship. A couple of years later, when she was 17, she was number eight in the world and stayed in the top 20 until two years ago. Holden has come back into the into the match. Carling says said so many. You know, you used to think she was such an air bubble, a real air child when she was a kid, sort of a spacey teenage kid, and uh, that's how I remember her anyway. Always real fun, delightful, but. Yesterday, when she spoke of herself, she said, you know, when you're younger, you're full of so much confidence. And so many people tell you, as we have a look at the big forehand winner down the line, the off winner from Groff, Bassett said, you know, so many people tell you that you're really, really good and you believe it. She said, no, I have to concentrate and fight for every point out there because I know what it's really like. She grew up nicely. I wonder if Gen Jennifer Capriati will ever say the same thing. That's Peter Graf and Michael right in the middle of the screen there. That's uh, Steffi's younger brother. He's going to, uh, to school in Mannheim, Germany right now. But he's come down for this tournament. Mary, Just do you think that Steffi feels a little more pressure since her dad has shown up? That might be a reason why she's not playing as well? Pammy, I was thinking the exact same thing. Oh, she changes when her, when her pop comes around. I really believe that. And I, would, I was a little hesitant to say it because who knows? We haven't seen her enough since her comeback. There's Peter right in the middle. And Heidi, who's been here all week. Peter just got here last night. I was thinking the same thing, but I, I didn't want to lay it off on, on Peter because, uh, again, we haven't seen Steffi hit enough balls to make that sort of judgment. Maybe she's just uh, got to work her way through her, her old form. I do know that she's different. You know, she was very relaxed, very amiable. It was a pleasure speaking with her yesterday, uh, getting to sit down and speak with her. I think she's a lot more businesslike when her pop shows up. And I just think that Peter Graf makes himself the bad guy to take all the heat off of her kid. I, th I think a lot of what he does isn't really bad. It's, it's difficult if you've got to work with it. But, but uh, in, in general, I, I think I agree with you, Cliffy, that he's, he's done a good job by his daughter. Right off the line, got a bad bounce there, a slide bounce, and couldn't control it. But it does affect you when you're playing in front of people that have been so close to you all for all of your life and have the expect, uh, the expect so much from you. Game point. Deuce. Back to Deuce. That was break point, of course, also for Carling Bassett. 
I also I so. feel that uh, sometimes when you start a tournament and you have, say, two people here with you, it's you get a certain continuity going, and then someone else shows up, and, and it sort of breaks that continuity. Two points later, it is game point for Graf. Remember, it was at this point in set one that Graf was broken for Bassett Sagusa to get back even in the first set at four games all. And then she lost the next two games. In fact, the two sets score-wise have been just almost identical. That's why. Yes. Also, we mentioned at the top of the show that Carling's attitude was one of her strengths coming into this match. I think Steffi Graf has sensed that Carling was not intimidated at all by her as an opponent or also by being here on center court. Carling loves the stage. Second break point. That's it, Sakusa only played four tournaments last year. Live NCAA basket, uh, baseball, rather, next Mississippi State at uh, Florida from Gainesville. But we will stay with this match uh, and our live coverage until it's finished. points against Groff sir, but she held on so she has a five game to three la lead now in the second she won the first six four after calling Bassett Sagusso leveled things at four games all in the first set nearly did so again in the second set but just failed so at the very least the world's number one will have a chance to serve for the match if she breaks here of course this is history Playing for a place in the semifinal, and alongside that semifinal berth will be either Zina Garrison or Natalia Spereva of the Soviet Union, who will play later. Number two seed Sabatini will also play later today. The Three seed Arancha Sanchez Vicario is already in the semifinals of Helen Kelsey earlier today. Bassett Saguso is going to make Groff serve for the match, which is what you always want to do. If you're serving at 3-5, you want to put the pressure on your opponent and make them serve it out.
Of course, maybe Steffi's decided she doesn't want to serve for the match at 5-4. She's won the last two points. She has one more game point against her. Well, she's going to have to, as you said, win another one to have a chance to break. Giving up 40 love leads is one of the most annoying things in tennis. <laughs> I've done it often. <laughs> Colin Bassett Sagusa holds on. When we come back, Steffi Groff will serve for the match. To the, at least the semi finals. Here, she's serving for the match. She really has missed a lot of volleys. That one was the easiest one she tried. Uh, sometimes curling just isn't close enough to the net. She has to sort of swing at her volleys a little bit, but that one, she was all over it. That's a killer error. It's even more of a killer error now that Groff followed up Carling's easy volley miss with a double fault. It's only it very well be love 30. It's only a second of Pam in the match, though. Coming up next, Mississippi State takes on Florida here on ESPN. That's live action as soon as this women's singles quarterfinal match is over. Steffi Graf is two points from accomplishing that. Oh. That's a third double fault, two of them in this game. So, Pam, you called it. Of course, she's serving into the sun, too, at this point, isn't she? But it's tough to, uh, to serve the match at the best of times, and even if you're that confident. is very chewed up at this point and most times in long clay court matches they do come after the first set and give the court a sweep I'm surprised they didn't do that in this match maybe they're waiting for me to do it it's about as close as you get to a clay court 
Hey, I, I own four in an indoor club, Mary. That's right. <laughs> Point, remember. Oh, she's down. God, yes. What? I mean, what bad luck. Chance to get back to five all here in the second set, and she was by no means out of the point, Mary. No, she really wasn't. Again, I, it could be that uh, that area of the court is, is a little dug up. I don't know. This sort of came out of nowhere, it seems. She's getting a hand for, uh, for coming back. You see that? She just sort of fell backwards. She looked just like her little boy right there. Mary, it looked as if she actually slipped on the line. Now, the lines here are uh, hammered down there. It's like a plastic line, and it can get very slick. Uh, she just looked over to her mother and boy and said, I'm OK. And now match point. You see, I'm, I'm not sure it was off the baseline. It's yeah. hard to tell because she seems beyond it. Doesn't matter now. Match point. Well done. Very well done. This should be an encouraging match for Carling Bass at Seguso. It really should. I mean, she's hung tough against the toughest. And remember, she started this tournament at 620 in the world, and she will end up at 160. But if she wins this, she'll be even better, of course. But she's going to have to come back a long way. She's down a set 5-4 and match point. Steffi Groff has beaten Carling Bass at Seguso and in straight sets is in the semi-final of the Bausch & Lomb for 1990.